Hey everyone, I have a new history video on the evolution of single player modes in fighting games coming out in a few weeks, but I recently played a new fighting game and just had to tell you about it. If you're anything like me, you use your phone for three things. Browsing social media, taking important phone calls, and porn. But I also use my phone to play all kinds of games. Arcade games, sports games, simulations, clickers, idols. But through all of my years of owning a smartphone with enough power to play games, one genre that I've been almost completely dissatisfied with is my favorite genre, fighting games. And that is because most mobile fighting games commit at least one of a few cardinal sins. My name is Stumblebee, and I'll be taking a look at the mistakes that some mobile fighting games make when transitioning a game to the small screen, and a recommendation for the one mobile fighter that I think absolutely nails it. Please consider subscribing to the channel and following me on Twitter at StumblebeeTV if you enjoy this video at any time. Due to their reliance on precise movements for both character control and special moves, fighting games are perhaps the one genre where stick input matters most. So why oh why do so many fighting games on a phone force you to use a tiny joystick on a capacitive screen? With an on-screen D-pad, you don't get a sense of tactile feedback that you'd otherwise get with a regular controller, causing missed inputs, incorrect moves coming out, thumb cramps, the works. This causes you to fight the controls more than your opponent. There are even products out there that are solely dedicated to making the experience of using thumbsticks on touchscreens not completely suck. Some mobile game developers understand that capacitive touchscreens don't often make the best controller. But in order to remedy that, some go into the complete opposite direction, simplifying their game too much, creating what essentially boils down to a glorified idle tap game. In this type of game, you don't really have the choice of movement, because in order to force action, characters will either automatically move towards each other, or start so close by together that they have no choice but to do their best Fry vs. Takayama impression. While the gameplay of some of these titles requires some semblance of timing in order to maximize the damage on combos, the gameplay on many of these titles are often so similar that it can be sometimes hard to even call them fighting games at all. And the last and one of the most pervasive issues in most of the fighting games that I've played on phones is the constant expectation for players to open their wallet. I'll happily spend $3 to play one of my favorite SNK fighting games or $5 to play the jankiest version of Street Fighter 4 out there. And I'll even watch the occasional ad if they aren't too obtrusive and spend money on the ad-free version if I enjoy the game enough. But the mobile games industry is rife with exploitative monetization schemes, and many of the fighting games on the platform, unfortunately, aren't an exception. Many games feature long, complicated upgrade paths and energy systems that lead to grindier and grindier progression that just so happens to be bypassable by using premium currency and consumable items that you can either buy a lot of at once with real money or earn at a frustratingly slow pace. Loot boxes that hold gameplay relevant items are almost always a guarantee, letting players gamble their way to a much better squad way faster than if they would play for it normally. Which brings me to the topic of today's video. I was browsing around Twitter when I spotted this tweet, which featured a combo in a fighting game that I'd never played before. It looked and sounded fun enough, so I clicked on some links and found that it's a game called Flappy Fighter, a satirical take on the 2013 viral smash Flappy Bird. The game is a free iOS exclusive right now with an Android port coming at an undetermined time in the future. I went in with fairly low expectations, but quickly realized that Flappy Fighter gave me some of the best fighting game experiences that I've ever had on a phone. Full disclosure, this video is not sponsored. I did reach out to the developer on Twitter for some music and some assets for the thumbnail, and I know many mobile game studios will reach out to YouTubers for sponsored videos, but this isn't one of those. I just wanted to highlight some things that this game does better than other games of its type. Starting with the most important thing, the controls. Instead of a D-pad or a joystick, Flappy Fighter gives you a forward dash button and a back dash button. But that's not all the movement options you have, however. You also have access to four special moves. A backwards hurricane kick, which doubles as a back jump, a jump forward roundhouse, a fireball, and an uppercut. 
These six buttons give you all of the control that you need over your character. And even without a D-pad nor any ability to walk slowly, you can still accurately position your character anywhere you want on the screen, allowing you to play a keep away game with fireballs or an up close game where you're rushing your opponent down. Despite the lack of normal attacks, you could even use a classic mid-range strategy by throwing fireballs and uppercutting your opponent out of the air as they jump in to counterattack. Even though you're just tapping on a screen to move an attack, the concessions made to the mobile platform don't mean that this is anything other than a full-fat fighting game experience. And that's even before we get into some of the advanced mechanics like dash cancelling fireballs, cancelling the forward jump into a backwards hurricane kick, cancelling a fireball startup animation with a super move, and more. The game is fast, the AI is challenging but fair and beatable, the implementation of Hitstop feels great, with a legitimately fun and open-ended combo system being the cherry on top. All of this serves to make the gameplay of this mobile fighter feel as close to its counterparts on console as possible without the need for joysticks, generic tapping, special move cards, or consumables. So we've established that Flappy Fighter's mechanics are great, but you may have noticed that the game is also incredibly slick in its presentation. The Street Fighter 2 inspiration is undeniable, but you can tell that the developer has a ton of reverence for that game, from even the small details on the inflection of the fireball voice line, and the fact that you can't even understand what the character's saying when throwing out a hurricane kick. Flappy Fighter is also unique in the sense that it's not trying to be anything other than a rock-solid mobile fighter. There's no way to upgrade your character's strength, no premium in-game currency, no unlock timers, and no game-changing loot boxes. The monetization strategy at play here is more than fair. The game will occasionally show you a skippable ad when moving from one menu to another, and will sometimes give you the option to watch an unskippable ad in full for a chance to unlock an alternate color. You can also disable ads and unlock all of the colors for $4, which feels like it's absolutely worth it. Flappy Fighter's developer is promising a roadmap of future updates for his game, including new characters, stages, and more. And as I said earlier, he's also looking into porting his game for Android. But if you have an iPhone or an iPad right now, you owe it to yourself to download this fantastic game. It's 30 megs, so it won't damage your data cap, and if you do decide to play it, I hope you see what I mean when I say that it's my new favorite mobile fighting game. Now, if you do have an Android, I would like to recommend the game Footsies by Hi Fight TV. It's a really good two player game that focuses on teaching you the basics about the mid range footsie game for fighting games. So, what fighting games are you playing on your phone? Have you tried Flappy Fighter? Let me know in the comments below, and once again, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and or follow me on Twitter at StumbleBTV. I'll be seeing you in a few weeks with a new video on the history and evolution of single player modes in fighting games. Peace out.